at this picture. Can you recognize this picture? Well, this is the picture of Bhimbedka cave paintings. That is, these paintings are found along the walls of Bhimbedka cave. So, this is the picture of Bhimbedka cave and here we have the paintings that are found at the walls of this cave. Now, can you tell me why are these paintings so famous? Well, the Bhimbedka cave paintings are so famous because they belong to the prehistoric times. This is to say that early men who lived in these caves made the figures of human beings and animals on the walls of the cave. So from this we understand that in ancient times people used to live in caves instead of permanent houses. But why so? Well, this is so because in ancient times people did not have any proper shelter. They mostly roamed about here and there in search of food and took shelter in a cave or under a tree. So here we understand that early men or early human beings used to live in caves. Now over time early human beings learned the trick of growing crops. Now as they started to grow crops they gave up nomadic life and settled beside a river. Now here they felt the need of building permanent houses for themselves. So they started clearing off the forest and building houses on these places and this eventually gave rise to the concept of settlements. Now, a settlement is a place where people live in. So, anywhere in the world where people live in is known as a settlement. Now, in ancient times, the settlement usually consisted of simple huts and small mud houses. Now, as we can see in this picture, these settlements developed and flourished along the banks of a river. This is because in these places water was readily available and the land was fertile enough for farming and cultivation. So here we find that as the human beings progressed, they started catering their need for another basic necessities of life besides food and clothing and that is houses. So this is to say that the human beings started building houses for themselves which eventually gave rise to large settlements. Now as mentioned just now, these settlements develop along the banks of some river. Now can you name some ancient settlements of the world that flourished along the banks of river? Now this map shows the early human settlements or ancient civilizations of the world and here we find that all of them flourished along the banks of some river. For instance, the Egyptian civilization flourished along the banks of river Nile. Mesopotamia civilization developed on the banks of river Tigris. Also, the Indus Valley civilization developed on the banks of river Indus. Whereas an ancient Chinese civilization that is the Huanghu civilization develop or flourish along the banks of river yellow. Now another name for river yellow is Huangho. So river yellow is also known as Huangho and the civilization that flourished on the banks of river yellow is Huangho civilization. Thus we understand that the river valleys played an important role in the development of early human settlements. Now over time as the human beings progress they develop or build different types of settlements. Let's know about them. But before we proceed with our lesson let us see if we can answer this. We will have to identify the river along which the Mesopotamian civilization flourished and the options given are river Nile, river Yellow, Indus river or Tigris river. Well you can't remember. Let me help you out. The correct answer is river Tigris. We just learned that the Mesopotamian civilization developed along the banks of river Tigris. Whereas the civilization that developed on the banks of river Indus is Indus Valley civilization. The civilization that developed along the banks of river Yellow is Huanghu civilization. 
again the civilization that developed along the banks of river nile is the egyptian civilization so the correct option among these is the tigris river that is the place where the mesopotamian civilization flourished now in order to understand the different types of settlements that exist in the world let me tell you all the story of john during the last summer vacation john went for trekking along with his friends now it would take him about 5 days in order to climb the mountain and another 3 days in order to climb down the slope so where would they stay for the night and take rest can they take their house along with themselves well it is not possible for john or anyone else to take or carry the house along with us them they we go so what's the remedy well john can make a tent for himself this tent would provide him temporary shelter and warmth during cold chilly nights also he can again fold this cloth and take it along with himself Now on completion of his trip John returned to his house in Kolkata so this is the beautiful house where John and his family lived for years So in this story we found that John lived in two places firstly during his trip he lived in a tent and he lived in this tent for shorter duration say a week and on completion of his trip he returned to his house and this is the place where john and his family stays for years now a tent which was occupied for shorter duration is an example of a temporary settlement so temporary settlement refers to the places which are occupied by the individuals for shorter duration that is the individuals do not live here permanently whereas on the other hand the house where john and his family lived for years is an example of a permanent settlement so permanent settlements are places where individuals live for life long so permanent settlements are places where people live for longer duration say their entire lifetime so we find that settlements can be of two types temporary and permanent temporary settlements are the ones where people live for shorter duration whereas permanent settlements are the one where people live for longer duration for instance their entire lifetime now a temporary settlement is usually found in tall mountains deep forests hot and cold deserts etc also people engaged in hunting gathering shifting cultivation etc built temporary settlements for themselves this is because they do not live in a particular place for long so they do not need any fixed shelter as a result they live in temporary settlements on the other hand permanent settlements are found in plateaus or plains that offer favorable terrain for cultivation farming cattle rearing etc so people in plains or plateaus live in a particular place for long because of suitable climatic conditions and here they build permanent settlements for themselves thus we can conclude that settlements can be of two types temporary and permanent now let us continue with our story of john We know John lives in Kolkata which is a city. Now one day during his last summer vacation he went to visit his ancestral home which is situated in a village at the outskirts of the city. Now this is the picture of his ancestral home and here we find that it is a simple mud house. It has a thatch roof and mud walls. Now this mud house is quite different from the one where John and his family lives. It has a simple construction and also it lacks modern amenities like refrigerators, air conditioners, etc. Now these simple mud houses are usually found in villages. 
in fact not only his ancestral home but the entire place was quite different from the place where john actually lived well as mentioned earlier john lives in kolkata which is a city whereas his ancestral home is situated in a village and we know that the cities are quite different from the villages in cities we usually find multi storied apartments which are built quite close to one another whereas in a village we usually find simple mud houses or small huts and these houses are placed at a distance and they are intercepted by large agricultural fields so in cities or urban centers the type of settlements that are found are known as urban settlements these urban settlement consist of multi storied apartments which are placed or constructed quite close to one another so urban settlements are compact and clustered as the houses we can see are placed or built one next to each other on the contrary in a village or in a rural area we can find rural settlements these rural settlements as mentioned previously consist of small huts or simple mud houses now these houses are built at a distance so rural settlements are often scattered and dispersed so on the basis of their location settlements can also be classified into two types urban and rural urban settlements are found in cities whereas rural settlements are found in villages now these urban settlements are usually compact and clustered whereas the rural settlements are often scattered and dispersed now while traveling through the village john found that some houses were built on raised platform now do you know where are these houses commonly found well such houses are usually found in regions of heavy rainfall where water accumulates frequently during rainy season now in order to adjust with the climatic conditions and the surrounding environment people built their houses on raised platform and these raised platform are known as stilts so in regions of heavy rainfall we find that houses are built on stilts or raised platform and these houses also have slanting roofs well these houses have slanting roofs so that rain water does not accumulate at the rooftop and they slide down now these features that is stilts and slanting roofs prevents these houses from being damaged due to heavy rainfall so from this we can conclude that people not only built houses for safety and shelter but also to suit their surrounding environment so in this lesson we understood how settlements evolved in earlier times people used to lived in caves but as they started growing crops they settled beside a river and this is how the concept of settlements grew the settlements initially flourished along the banks of a river and then spread to other parts of the world as well in today's world we can find different types of settlements in urban centers we find urban settlements whereas in villages we find rural settlements also settlements can be categorized into two types temporary and permanent in temporary settlements people live for shorter duration whereas in permanent settlements people live for longer duration then we also discussed that people build houses in order to adjust with their climatic conditions for instance in regions of heavy rainfall we find that houses are built on stilts or raised platform and they have slanting roofs so that's all about today's lesson on settlements don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. 
master each topic with our adaptive practice technology, get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now